first is stepping outside the uh, curriculum by Lady Blue Pants. We have two experts from Johnson and Wales University. We're very, very proud and pleased to have them here today. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce Ellen Duke. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Chef Duke uh, joined the faculty at JW Charlotte in 2011. After graduating from Syracuse University with bachelor's in hospitality and food service management and a minor in nutrition, she earned an associate degree in education arts from JW Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chef. <laughs> um, Chef Duke has worked in various baking and pastry settings, including fine dining, catering, specialty cake shops, and large scale production bakeries. She currently owns and operates Artisan Bread Company in Charlotte. Uh, she is a certified working pastry chef by the ECF and a certified hospitality educator by the AH and LA. Uh, she is currently working on her master's of uh, hospitality administration at UNLV in Los Angeles. Uh, Cece Kreller, a native of Minneapolis, received a master's degree in hotel administration from UNLV in 1985. After working for several years in the wholesale pharmaceutical industry, she earned an associate degree in occupational studies and culinary arts from NECI in Vermont in 1998. Chef Krellis has previously worked in the pastry departments of numerous restaurants and hotels throughout Las Vegas, including Wolfgang Puck by Dining Group, Le Cirque and Circo at the Bellagia Hotel and Casino, the Four Seasons Hotel, and the M Resort Spa Casino. Chef Krellis is also a CWP student by the ACF and a CHE by the AH in LA. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please join me in welcoming Chefs Duke and Krebs. Sounds so great. <laughs> Could you just follow me everywhere I go and give that introduction? Can you do that for me at home? Yeah. <laughs> I get so many more points. That would be awesome. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for choosing stepping outside of the curriculum via baking boot camp. So, as he said, I'm Cece Krantz and this is uh, Chef Ellen Duke. We're so happy that you're here today. Um, today, um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you our JWU model for baking boot camps, and which we feel can be used in any discipline. We're going to talk about our expected outcomes and then our unexpected outcomes, which there were many of those. We're going to then talk to you about the logistics, how we set it up and how you can set it up. And at the end, we're going to take um, some time and work with you to set up your own uh, boot camp, whether it's baking or it's culinary or if there's something if you're here from hospitality. I'm not sure if we have the law professor that was in the other class, mm -hmm. but because we do feel that our model can work for any discipline. Absolutely. So you've been seeing some pictures scrolling from boot camps that we've done at JWU. And we're going to bring those back so you can see them again. But I hope that you're getting some inspiration already from those. So welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, to start and to kind of get into the birth of our boot camp program, we need to explain the Johnson & Wales model to you. Because our model is very, very different. Our academic schedule runs on trimesters. There is a fall term, a winter term, and a spring term. Now imagine all those terms chopped up into little segments. Each one is five segments and each segment is nine days long. So that's right, one class is nine days. So where we hear you guys talking about week two, week four, week five, we see them for nine days, six hours a day, 54 hours, that's it. That's our contact time. So when they'll go to pies and tarts class in this yellow segment, they stop and they start a whole new class in the pink segment. So this is just kind of a snapshot of our upcoming October. We have usually about four days a week of class. Okay, and that will change. Sometimes with holidays, you'll see that we shift and have a Friday lab, but that's rare. Um, you know, we most of the time have Fridays open. We're a very career-driven university, so Fridays are great days for students to pick up jobs. They're great times to get some extra kitchen time in, so extra work. Maybe they need to practice some chocolate piping or they need to do something in the kitchen. That's a great opportunity for that. So our labs are either AM from seven to one, or p.m. from about 2 to 8 o'clock at night. So these Fridays, we found in the past were a great opportunity for this Friday refresher program that we were starting. So maybe a student would miss a day. You're only allowed to miss one day, and then you're dropped from the lab if you miss any more. So if they did miss a day and they have to make up assignments, they'd come to a Friday refresher to do whatever that assignment was. Or maybe they just wanted extra practice. This was OK. I think the program started out maybe great, 
But then it didn't end off very great uh, in the end. We, we killed it. <laughs> PC and I just destroyed that. What happened with that program was it was run by teaching assistants. So no chef was really there. It would be other students that are working for the university. You know, they're getting paid to be there. They would be in the lab with the students and just kind of helping around. You know, they weren't experts on the subject by any means. And there really wasn't an outcome. They would just come practice a skill. They wouldn't really have any kind of takeaway from that. They would just do it. So it might have sounded like a good idea at the beginning, but didn't really work out for us. So what CC and I were asked to do from our department chair was kind of reinvent this program. We wanted to take Friday refreshers. We wanted to kind of spin it in a new way, give it a new name. We thought boot camp for some reason sounded like fun. I don't know, skills and <laughs> drills that still practice baking skills. Um, and we like alliteration, so BBC Baking Boot Camp worked for us. And our department chair said she still wanted incorporation from the curriculum. She still wanted us to talk about creaming method or blending method, or we still needed to do piping. But let's kind of spin it in a way that's like a little sexy, right? A little exciting for the students. Maybe have an outcome, but oh yeah, here's the catch. We don't, we don't really have any budget for this program. <laughs> so you need to utilize extra product that's in the labs. So maybe you've got some extra sugar in the bin. Maybe you've got some extra flour, butter, figure it out. Luckily, we communicate really well with each other. I teach a lot of cake decorating classes, so I'll have extra buttercream all the time. We could do some kind of maybe buttercream basics sort of piping class. Maybe we'd have a pipe off, or we could do some kind of um, piping Olympics. I don't know. So we wanted it to be things that we're doing in class, but different from class. So when we sat down to plan this baby, Cece and I thought Fridays would work for us maybe three to four hours. I mean, we're used to six every day for class, so to try to condense it down was a little tough. We started with three, but then in the third year, yeah, we went to, year, four. We to four. And the hours. students started asking for more, too, which was kind of exciting. Uh, about 15 to 20 students we thought would work well because our labs are built for a nice, comfortable maybe 16. So that's what we wanted to attract. We wanted chefs to be there. That was the big thing. Okay, no more Friday refreshers with just other students and students, and they're just sitting there texting on their phones and maybe, you know, making a biscuit. Uh, we wanted chefs to be there, and we wanted them to drive the whole thing. But the catch was they needed to volunteer to do this. Huh. Yes? Chefs or culinary chef instructors? Chef instructors. Okay, um, so but they we, from the community? No, right. From our family. Yeah, so they would be chef instructors. But now that you say that, I don't see any reason why someone from the community couldn't come in for one of our boot camps. So well, thanks for the idea. Thanks for the tip. Thank you. Uh, but we wanted them to have a sexy theme. So you might have seen, I don't know if you saw the French macaroon boot camp that we did. We had some photos from that. So we would take French macaroons, a skill that they would do in class, uh, you know, Italian meringue method, French meringue method, whatever. But we would take those and maybe spin them and do savory fillings instead of sweet. You know, we're doing the sweet stuff in class, but let's try it a little bit different and give each class a theme. A couple other ones I did were uh, uh, soup and bread for the Johnson & Wales soul, you know, trying to spin off the chicken soup for the soul. So we would do bread bowls and then a culinary chef would come help me make soup or something. But it was important for us to make sure it wasn't like a class. You know, we were bound by curriculum already. You know, we have to stick to what's in the syllabus. Let's make it fun and make it a little bit different. And then we found that it was a lot of fun the first year to do it with just baking chefs and pastry chefs. But then we got culinary guys involved and then we got some front of the house instructors involved. It was so much fun. Yeah, and so I can speak a lot to that because, um, first of all, for the themes, oftentimes it was things, you know, maybe I, you know, there's certain things that I am bound by the curriculum and that I have to teach, but there's other things I might be interested in doing, and I want to do them more than one time. So in one of my classes, I teach Hala for culinary students, but we make the dough, and they each make one, maybe three hollows or whatever. So instead of, you know, and then that's it, then we're on to the next item, right? We're on to the next item. So I did a braided breads, and we had a lot of students sign up for that one because, you know, they knew they were gonna make holla. And um, we made like 50 pounds of holla, and then we only had like eight students show up. So literally we had like <laughs> speed bags everywhere, but we had holla for everyone. We were running around to the librarians, everyone, but it gave them multiple times to practice. So yeah, it was great for them. They got to, you know, practice that, um, all that braiding, and, but also it was great for me to be able to do it more because I don't just teach that class. I might teach three or 
I might not have taught that class for you know two or three terms. Uh, maybe hadn't taught it from the year before. So it also gives us an opportunity to practice. And so as Ellen said, the first year it was just pastry chefs. Once in a while you'd have another pastry chef help you or you do it on your own. So the second year we started, and I started that off with another pastry chef and we actually did this kind of a successful tools for success because as we all know, the first day of class, and I don't care if it's high school or if it's uh, post-secondary, everyone's really nervous and they're most eager. You know, September versus April, we know how eager they are. And so we, he and I, he had t made a bunch of ice cream in the summer, so we had his ice cream, but what he and I did is he made one sauce one way, I did another <laughs> way. He made, um, caramel sauce one way, I did caramel sauce another way. He did raspberry sauce one way, I did it another way. He did nuts one way, I did another way. So what we were doing is we were showing them these skills because it was skills for your success as the first boot camp. Some of them might not have even been in class yet because the only requirement was our students have to be in uniform. That's it, it could be anyone on the campus. It's a hospitality, culinary, bacon and pastry, we don't care, it could even be a business or a fashion student. If they're interested, they just have to be in the culinary uniform. So he and I started that one with two chefs, and then another part of that was the math. We all know they need math, and he and I are kind of big math pushers, and so, yeah. And so what we did after they made all these toppings, they then had ice cream, and then we sat down and we did a math portion with them with some problems and that, so it was more fun because they were eating ice cream, right? And then I did one also with one of the culinary chefs. We did a butcher and a baker. And actually, it was two culinary chefs, and one I had really not spoken to very much. Hi, how are you? But I'm in pastry, and so I was pretty kind of, honestly, a little intimidated of him, which I think he'd be <laughs> kind of surprised to know, but I was. I, you know, he'd been there a long time. He's been teaching a long time. I was a little nervous. So we did a butcher and baker where we made, I made uh, steam buns, and they did sausage. So we had the sausage machine over here, and we're making the dough over here. And I was in a kitchen I had never been in before. So the other chef who had been in there was helping both of us with the equipment and that. And it was a great collaboration. We had bacon and pastry. We had culinary. We had freshman and sophomore. And so that second year, actually it was by the end of the first year, the culinary instructors were like, when are we going to get a boot camp? And we're like, and I think they said that to the person who asked us to put this program in. She said, you know, I just asked them to do that. Just they do it. turn this into <laughs> what own. this is. Mm -hmm. So we incorporated them in by last year when we had our first, you know, faculty meeting for everyone back to school. We had sign up sheets and people were in. They're like, I'll do one, I'll do one. And they were really excited to do it. And going forward, I've already talked to one of our Spanish teachers when she found out about it. She's like, but I can't cook or bake. I'm like, I don't care. I need you for the Spanish. We all know how much Spanish is in this country if you've worked around the country at all. So she's going to do something. I said, I'll handle the baking if you handle the Spanish. And then um, we also have the librarians in there that she wants to be part of it too. So we're trying to expand out, not just within culinary and baking and pastry, but really throughout the university. Yeah, it's really cool. So I mean, going into this, we had some expectations, right? We knew that it was going to be pretty fast paced. You know, work used to six hours this is half the time. We got to move. We wanted to reinforce techniques from their labs, but spin them in a different way. You know, it wasn't going to be just like class. It was going to be really fun for them to learn. So we thought it was going to be fun, guys. But really, the fun part comes when you don't give a quiz every day, and you don't have to lecture, and you don't have to assess the practical. You know, we thought for the students, this was going to be awesome, right? We were going to teach them new skills. They could not literally let their hair down, but they could just relax a little bit. You know, they could pull out their phone and take pictures of what they're doing or videotape each other. It was just a fun place for them. We knew that they would make new relationships with each other. Like Cece said, anyone with a uniform was invited. We brought, this was like our star photo from our last boot camp. If you had a uniform, you could come to the boot camp. So they were going to make relationships with each other. They wouldn't be in the same labs. If they were culinary and baking, they wouldn't have the same course schedules at all. Uh, we thought maybe they'd make more relationships with us, too, because I'm not going to teach a lot of culinary students. We only have a couple of baking classes for them, and I don't usually teach them. So if I'm meeting culinary students at these boot camps, I think that's great. Let's make more connections. Why not? Um, you know, maybe we'll find out we're from the same hometown and maybe we worked at the same place one time. To make those connections with the students, especially right from the beginning of the year, I mean, we know that's valuable. We know that's strong, right? So getting into it, we knew that, but holy cow, when we got to the unexpected outcomes, I mean, it, they were more significant, I think, than what we had planned for. 
we obviously student engagement number one we have talked about engagement and retention at just about every faculty meeting we've had and I think if I hear the word retention one more time from the department chair I'm gonna freak out um, but we know when they're engaged and when they feel like they're part of something they're gonna stay these kids are terrified they have just left home you know really they're two three months out of high school when we get them and a lot of them have never been in the industry before. They don't even know how to put their little neckties on the right way. You see the little colors there. So the different color neckties are for different groups. The darker ones are the lower classmen, the freshmen. So when they come in, they are just, they're a mess on the first day. So we want them to feel like they're a part of something. You know, they just spent a lot of money to come to our school. We need to make them feel like they belong somewhere. And when we started talking to them at these boot camps, we would get into conversations about internships about jobs, careers. Cece deserves like a golden medal for staying at a boot camp. I know there's a student you stayed with for a long time just talking. Yes, um, and one thing just so uh, about this last picture before I tell you that little story. Um, we have students in there with light and dark, so that's freshmen, our sophomore, and baking and pastry. And um, one of those students, she's in the back, it's kind of hard to see her, Chloe, she actually took both programs. And so it was like, this was not planned at all. They actually happened to come out while we were in another faculty meeting and we like took a picture and it wasn't until after we looked at the picture, we're like, Look at oh, people this is what we want, <laughs> yeah. right? They're, 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 you know, there's even students in here who I'm looking right here, right at this student right here and this student right here, this is St. Louis, and they're going, they're garnish your degree. So they're not, you know, they they already have their bachelor's degree. So they came because just they want the associates with the culinary, the baking, and pastry. And so we have a great mix of ages and everything. And by this, the last boot camp, it's interesting to see how they can really help each other and teach each other. So it is very, um, for me, it's fun learning because in the classroom, I don't want them texting and Facebooking and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. I want them to be as focused as I can get them at seven in the morning. But when I'm doing a baking boot camp, I don't care if they're on their phones. I literally, you know, if you want to be on your phone texting, that's fine. I so appreciate because we've been doing them at eight o'clock in the morning on a Friday and they don't have to be there. They could be sleeping. I so appreciate that they wake up, they're in uniform, they look exactly the, like they would in class, professional like we want them. They're ready to go with their little knife kit. Sometimes if you're not, have that kitchen open early enough, they're waiting for you. And so if they're texting that day, I don't care. You know, that, that doesn't bother me. I, I'm not grading, I don't have to grade. And that story that she was talking about is one of our boot camps, and I think it was one of the croissant, croissant ones. I had a student, that was the year, it was the first year, it was eight to 11, and he had me there till three o'clock. Now granted, we probably ended up cleaning a little late, maybe till 11, 30 or 12, because with um, the, the doughs and things and proofing, but he just wanted to talk, and he wanted to talk about what he was gonna do, because he had so many different options. He was from Hawaii and he had family business, but he didn't know about that. Or should he go for an internship in Hawaii? Should he go somewhere else? And at the end of it, and I must have not had much to do that Friday because that's an exceptionally long time to spend with one person on one day. I know we all um, consul students, but what it tells me is that it, it's just such a great opportunity. Later on down the road, I never saw him because he was already sort of done with his labs, but he sent me an email. He did end up going back to Hawaii. And I like to think that just him knowing that someone cared enough, and I think that we all know our students want to be cared about, and they, they need some validation that someone is listening to them, even if it's not your issue, but it's their issue. And we've had lots of things come up. Um, Chef Duke knows about a student who was going to drop out at one of the boot, boot camps. Yeah, that came out. At, I overheard her at a cake decorating boot camp, and she was talking with another student, and she said, no, I just I don't feel like this is for me. I'm, I'm thinking about going home, thinking about not coming back. And then I just watched her graduate last year, little Rebecca. And <laughs> it was like such a huge success story. Of course, I like to think it was the baking boot camps that kept her with us, but I think it was everything. I think it's a combination of all of that. You know, it's, it's these opportunities we give them to engage outside of class. I think it's the amazing job that our residence life does over at the dorms. I think it's all of us working together as a team that helps to keep our students there. And, you know, we were able to increase our attention numbers drastically this year. We had some great numbers during our last faculty meeting. But it's those personal connections, right? It's our strong relationships with the faculty, not only just student to faculty, but faculty to faculty. Like Cece said, that one guy, of course he's like my best friend, but <laughs> now it's like I could call on him for anything. You know, any kind of little project I have to do. I know Chef Malcolm, he'll be there for me. And we just have a really good time working with each other. We miss that, right? We came from the industry and now we're teachers. 
we never had that, that teaching training, so we missed that industry part. I do, at least. I don't know about you guys. Um, and so we're breaking down those silos. It's not just the culinary cohort and their little cliques. It's not just the pastry kids. You can see that picture says it all. There's light neckties, there's dark neckties, there's all the colors. Um, you can see the pastry students, they're the green ties, and the culinary students are the blue ones. You know, we, we attracted them all, and that was really cool for us to see. Um, and I had a meeting at the end of the year with the dean of the business school talking about something completely different, so one of his issues. And I started talking to him about these, these baking boot camps, and he's like, okay, yeah, you know, we could do that. That could work like with us. I'm like, yeah, an accounting. I tried to do a few accounting ideas for him, but you know, I'm not an accountant. And then he goes, but are you telling me that like my business students could come to your baking boot camps for like as long as they're in uniform? And he's like, I'll help you promote it. And I was like, wow, I'm just like a little pastry cook. That's what I think of myself. I just like baking. And here's his dean, and he thinks it's a great idea, and he even wants to get his students. I'm like, yeah. you know, hoorah, like they say. Gotta figure out how to make accounting sexy. We'll figure that, we'll figure that one out. Um, but for us, too, it's just fun to teach. We, we know it's going to be a relaxed learning environment. For us, it was so fun to teach that. Like I said, there's no grading. You know, I really wanted to learn more about knife cuts, and I really wanted to learn more about making soups and stews at home. So I did that soup and bread boot camp with one of my colleagues. And I also did one with somebody else. He did smoked meats, and I did, you know, just sandwich rolls for that boot camp. And it was just so much fun. And, you know, to have a way for us to just channel our passion into another way, I mean, we are so into this kind of stuff. Like, the students love to see that. They love to see that we're excited about something. And they also love to see us learn. Like, can you imagine that, right? We can still learn? No, the chefs know everything, right? I mean, when you think that you are going to stop learning and you know it all, that's when you're dead, right? You can't. I will never stop learning, and I start every lab by saying that to my students. You have to have that attitude. So for us, it was just a great time, you know? And then one of the things that, you know, we don't want to forget that our boss, she wanted to have the skills and drills. So instead of us talking about, oh, the creaming method or the rubbing method, I, we know when they did the biscuits and jam, which is a culinary and a baking and pastry instructor this year, mm -hmm. is that one that this year? Um, they're doing the rubbing method, right? We don't have to say, you know, tell them that they're doing the rubbing method. When they're doing pat -a -shoot, they're just making eclairs, but he's doing all different kinds of things that they know it's pat -a -shoot. When they're making pastry cream for something for the Danish, they're making pastry cream again. Maybe in class they only get to make it, you know, two or three times in that first class. So certain things they get to, you know, those laminated doughs, they're getting that opportunity to do it again. So we even were recently at a meeting that that whole issue came up. Well, where's the skills and drills part? And every instructor who, and this is just the pastry faculty at this meeting, who had taught one said, well, in mine, I do this, this, and that. Because we just had, like, the gentleman there who taught the sugars, well, this skill is used. And all the different instructors, because I knew that she was, that question was for us to kind of change the direction we are going, okay? And it was great to see the faculty say, no, we like the direction it's going. They're getting the rubbing. They're getting 10 steps of bread making. They're getting knife cuts. They don't know in soup cuts, uh, soups and the and soup stuff, of the soul yeah. that we want that, but we look at that when we have ideas and we'll get more into the marking of it. We look to see, okay, out of that day, what kind of skills are they are getting reinforced without telling them. It was so cool for us to see that support from faculty too. I mean, Cece and I sometimes think like we're annoying people by saying, you sign up for our boot camps, guys, you know, drink the Kool-Aid, you have to come sign up for a boot camp. <laughs> and, you know, to see them all backing us up and saying, you know, this is really fun and this is what we're doing, that was just so rewarding. So Cece's going to talk a little bit about the logistics and how we made this stuff happen. Right. And so for us, as Ellen showed you in the calendar, Fridays is our free day. And um, so that's why we picked Fridays. And sometimes we're, that's very challenging for us. Like, I'm sure it could be for you whatever day it is. Or you're thinking, really? I'm going to volunteer. I'm not going to get paid. And I have no budget for this? You are kidding me. You're describing right? a high school teacher. <laughs> yes, I know, exactly. But this is what we want you to understand. Ours started at three and went to four hours, but it can be an hour. And does it have to be with product? Absolutely. We're going to get into more of that with the brainstorming. It doesn't, it can be 
it doesn't even require that. Think about, like, we have a restaurant depot, and for some of the kids, they have never been to a restaurant depot. Are, is everyone familiar with restaurant depot? Because they didn't have one in Nevada. I think they have it now, but when I moved here, I was like, restaurant depot, okay. So it's this huge store where all the restaurants in town, they buy from, like, they may not buy, they may buy from Cisco or US Foods, but you can go to restaurant depot as long as you have an account. We get to go there because they give JWU a pass, you show our ID, so we can shop there, but that's where all the equipment is, that's where you can buy the wheels of cheese, everything. So for me, I, it wasn't a baking boot camp, but I took some students there. And I always tell them, I am, and I say this in class, I'm like a crack addict when I go to Restaurant Depot because I love all that stuff. Like yeah, the too, nice containers. The mall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we have students with drug problems. You don't have the, you know, you don't have the yeah, uh, monopoly on that. You'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah. They're everywhere. And all those problems are everywhere. We, we all face them. But um, uh, so things like that you can do that it requires just driving. Right? And so that's where sometimes we have to think out of the box. And we're starting to think about different ideas that we can do for next year. So um, the most important thing is what's going to work for you. Maybe it's evenings. Maybe it's a Saturday. Maybe it's right after school. Maybe it's in the morning. You know, that's, you're going to have to figure that out at your place. Then confirm with whoever, for us, it's our chair, the dates, because sometimes she has things scheduled on Friday, months ahead, that we have no idea that are going on. So once we confirm that, we've already been talking about dates for next year because the calendar, as you know, what I learned in education, a little different than industry, certain things, is that the calendar books up really fast in education. And so then we recruit instructors. And of course, we went to the people who we know would support us, our friends first, and then other people came along. As they saw, this is kind of fun. This is, we have a component at Johnson & Wales which is called University Service, and we have to give back to the university, and we're expected to give back, whether it's community service, where you have to be during orientation, spend at least four hours somewhere within that orientation week for our students, and so this was another idea, was to give our all the pastry, and now it's become culinary faculty, also the opportunity, four hours, university service. It gets written up, it gets documented, and when you go up for promotion, it becomes part of that packet. So it's not just, you know, I did my, um, laminated doughs and nobody knows about it. It all gets recorded and is accounted for. So if they don't have a topic, we brainstorm. We always have more topics than we can ever have Fridays for. I mean, we always have that. And again, thinking skills-based, what do they need? What would be fun? What do they not get in the curriculum, but can really still be part of the curriculum? So for us, we have to reserve lab space. We have a lot of labs at Johnson & Wales, and there's a lot of things going on. Other people might book them. Sometimes outside vendors use our kitchens, and so we need to reserve that room or wherever you're going to have it. Um, we created flyers, and then there's a sign-up sheet. Our flyers, there's some example of them I'm going to show you next. Plus, we also uh, brought them, so if afterwards you want to look at them, you can look at them. They're really um, colorful. They're cute. Yeah, they're very colorful. <laughs> and we have a sign-up sheet that currently is hangs outside our chair's door. because She likes to see that and fill it up and just think that's her way of watching what are we doing. Um, it's important for us to not just have the calendar and say, okay, go do your boot camps, but if you just did one, and I'll say this, Sophie, um, Sophie, how was Friday? Like, I'll either maybe send an email, or Monday I'll say, how did it go? How was your turnout? You know, how were the students? Anything we need to be aware of. Because we want to be, you know, proactive. What did they say? Was anything good? Anything bad? Did you have a problem with um, any kind of, you know, food? Did you have enough? And what you have to understand with our nine days, oftentimes she takes cakes, and I might teach an intro to baking for culinary. I got all kinds of stuff left over. And so that product, as y'all know, has been paid for. I don't want to throw it out. We can't, there's nowhere to like, return open milk, open cream, open cheeses, all these perishable fruits, vegetables. So we kind of try to pay attention to that, and then we use them. If we can't use them in our class, we'll go around and say, hey, I have a baking boot camp. I'm doing a plate of desserts. What do you have? And we'll just morph it right into there. So people are kind of used to us, uh, baking boot camp people, coming around and saying, what do you have extra that we can use? And just kind of on that, too, I mean, even if you don't have that perishable product, if you take a look at this picture, that's, that's just sugar. That's just, you know, granulated sugar. They cooked down. That was it. That's all that they spent. And that was just stuck in the bin. They had a 50 pound bag they opened and didn't use it. So, you know, it can happen. Very low cost. Very, very low cost. You don't even need anything. You could just do a balancing checkbook boot camp or, you know, spin that in a, in a mark, great marketing way. But, I mean, just as an example, it doesn't have to be pricey. All right. No, it's a, I think there's a lot of ideas, and we're looking at trying to do that because we might be taking them out of the kitchen this year. That's another thing. Uh, so the email is really important, as you all know. And just following up, 
And also, why do I want to follow up with that? Because I want Sophie to do it next year. I mean, I'm not stupid, right? I want her to, I want to make it an enjoyable event for the faculty member who is helping us keep this program going. We're going to go into our fourth year, and we want to know that maybe she won't teach in the fourth year, but maybe the fifth year. If we spread it out, you know, we average anywhere between the first year, maybe 15, and then this last year, maybe 12, and that was because of the dates and the way the holidays fell and things like that. So uh, some chefs don't teach one year, but maybe they'll teach the next year. So these are examples of our marketing. And if anybody needs a boot camp, we learned we need a little bit of a marketing boot camp. Um, so we post these flyers around the campus. We also put them on all the doors of the labs, but that becomes like something the students sometimes just walk by. And they'll say, oh, I never saw a poster. You know, we know because we're the ones that hang up these posters. Even that fluorescent uh, so yellow. So we need to get the buy-in of the other faculty, even if they're not going to be part of the baking part that Friday, but promoting it in their class. So we ask that, and some of them are great at that, and some, as you know, they get inundated with too many things, and you know, there's the class they have to run. So that's one thing. Uh, direct contact with incoming freshmen. Uh, we have that AM PM schedule, so one of us will go talk to all the AM freshmen that are coming in, and one of us will go talk to all the PM freshmen coming in. Uh, we decided that doing it during the orientation week, it's overkill. They just are, are lost at that first week. There's too much information coming at them, so that doesn't work for us. Um, some opportunities that we're gonna do for uh, this coming year is, I found out that we have a marketing club on our campus, which I didn't know, and that was with that meeting with the dean of the business college, and he was like, well, we have a marketing club. I'm like, do you think they, well, go talk to her. I went and talked to her, and she said, yeah, we'd love to help you. So they're gonna help me. Um, figure out and maybe she'll make it a project for the club and that's not a class it's a club uh, and this one this is kind of embarrassing but it's kind of right in front of your eyes and you don't even think about it every morning when I take the elevator at 5 30 in the morning I look at the campus monitor and I don't know why we never thought why don't we put the flyers on the campus monitors for every student who is waiting to take the elevator and so that's going to be something we're going to do in um, uh, Chef Duke is a advisor to our learning, living learning communities. If you're not familiar with the living learning community, that's when the students all come. They are all put on the same floor together. They sign up. Ours are now in academics together for that first term. Uh, throughout the, each month, there are different activities that Ellen and Paul, he's the other advisor, because it's a baking and pastry, learning, living community, LLC for short, and a culinary, and they do event, events all throughout the year. There's community service events and things like that. Another one that was like right in front of our eyes, but we never like promoted directly to them. Well, they start in academics, and we know from our students who are primarily start in academics, that oftentimes that they're itching to get in the kitchen. Well, what a perfect way for them to get in the kitchen. So when they go in, in their winter term, and it's a three compartment sink, and someone says, bring me the sanitizer, at least they know, oh, that three compartment sink, that's that thing they wash dishes in. Because we have a lot of students who have never ever been in a professional mm -hmm. kitchen. So it takes that angst that they have off, you know, being in those kitchens for the first time. Um, just following up again with chefs and students, and I think this year um, we're, going to work. We had some emailing systems going on, reminder emails for the students to come and then follow up emails. I can say we didn't follow up as well as we should have. Bef after this whole presentation was done, I was sitting there just sort of talking. This is just recently when I was on a plane and I said, we should do a punch card like they do, like they used to do at Starbucks, you know? And so, unless we can electronically figure out how to do this, where every baking boot camp you go to you get a punch for it. At the end, there's like a prize. Whether and you know, we'll probably do monetary. We can't give them money, but we can give a gift card or something. Just some way to like incentivize, because we know our students like to be incentivized. Um, in the classroom, it's kind of the grade a lot of times and some things, but to get it out with them to do that. So what we want to do now is we want to take this time to have a little activity. And what we want you to do is either grab a partner or two or three people, whatever you're most comfortable there. Uh, what would you teach if, if you could? Because really, most of our teaching is about what we want to do in those hours. It's a little bit about what the students need, but it's, you know, I take my holla for example. So what Ellen is passing around are these little cars. We want you to talk about each other with the different topics. Yeah, so flip them over on the back side. Just maybe jot down a few ideas. Maybe you've had something, I mean, I hope you've had something just burning in your brain since this has started. Um, so just jot it down. We gave you many copies. 
because we're going to take one back. And we all know we go to these conferences and everything sounds great. And it's like, yeah, I want to start that tomorrow. And then next week we forget we were even here, right? We'll be at the beach or you know, drinking lemonade and our pineapple. So we're going to take this back and we're going to email you in a few months before school starts. And we're going to remind you that you have this awesome idea today. All right, so take a few because you'll probably want to take one with you too. We have lots of extra copies. Take a couple minutes. If you want to talk to each other, you can. I know a lot of people are here from the same institution. Maybe you guys could collaborate a little bit. Um, but yeah, take a couple minutes, and then we want to hear what you guys have thought of. And we're, we're around to help, too, if you're like totally stuck and have no idea. Um, extra. Making pasta from scratch. Ooh, that's a good one. It's like once you've had fresh pasta, like why go back? It's like a fresh marshmallow, like no more jet puffed after you've had one. Yeah. Any others? Any other ideas? Healthy baking? That's a good one. Healthy baking? I heard you all talking. I know you have ideas. Yeah. Um, making cosmetics, like um, a sugar scrub for your hands, a facial oh. scrub, um, absolutely. Oh, homemade lotion. Yeah, after Anne Marie's workshop, I want to do that <laughs> at the end of every day. <laughs> they love it. Oh. Well, you know, knowledge that you made me think about something is that I read this article about how uh, one of the Ritz Carlton's was taking their rendered fat. I'm not sure which animal, sorry guys. And I, and they're making soap. And so I gave it to Paul, the guy who at first I'd been scared of. And I said, Paul, I don't, I don't know if you can do this, but you know, maybe you want to try this. And literally he was making soap and bringing it in. Oh yeah. He gave us all samples of that. So that would actually Oh yeah, be I hit him up for good. holiday gifts all the time. Yeah, so. Beef tailor soap. That lard fat. Oh, yeah. Dog treats, making dog treats. Oh, fun. Oh, oh, yes. 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 And that might be fun to kind of pair with like a, an animal shelter, maybe do some kind of a drive. We do a, we have a really cute activity. It's Johnson and Wales and Tails, and the chefs bring their dogs so that the students can meet them and kind of play with them, and we have rescues come. So that would be really fun to do. And then they also do like some of the chefs volunteer their time, and the dean gets the food, and they do like bratwurst and just chips and soda. And it's become, they have actually, we have this amazing event planning instructor. So it is now part of her event planning class. So it's like, it's really great. Oh, that's fun. I can't wait to write these down. I know. I'm gonna take else? I was talking about uh, to start to develop maybe just a culinary field trip group. Exactly. Sort of mm. wineries, but a uh, farm table farmers to just kind of get people who, because everybody's into food. Yeah. But they may not know where to go. It's like, well, go with us. We're going to go to the guys who make cheese two counties over in our cheese shop. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Exactly. I'm looking, but it gets involved from all programs. We just want to go see how to make honey. We'll take you to a honey game. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that's gas, right? Literally. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. gas. And we all, you know, we. Just to start something. You know, maybe at, at some of your facilities, you may have vans. We don't have vans, but usually enough the students have a car. And, um, you know, you might not have a budget. Like we know, especially for high school teachers, the budgets are really tight, right? It's probably bringing enough home in. So th those are great. I, I don't know if I'm repeating, I didn't hear that, but um, what about missing local farmer's markets? I know in yeah. central Pennsylvania, we have a lot of local farmer's yeah. markets and it's the farm table, so it's a big concept. Definitely. And I think just, and I've heard this throughout sort of some of the other sessions I've done, is encouraging our students to not just do it in class, right? To like, okay, so you go to that farmer's market and then you went to that, you know, maybe a cheese place. So what would you do? Can you do anything at home? Especially for the people who have all commuter students, right? So maybe they could, you know, I give extra credit if they go to bacon boot camp. I know some people say that's a horrible thing to do, but you know what, again, if they're gonna get up at seven o'clock and spend four hours with me or with Ellen or with Paul or Ron, I don't care, I'm happy. Because I usually, we always usually, one of us is at the baking boot camp. We may not be there for the full four hours. The instructor doesn't need us, but we want to go in. Obviously, we want to taste, but I want to see who's there. My student makes me really proud when they're there. And I say, oh, Tarina, how are you? I didn't know you were going to come. i got to write that down. And they're like, yeah. And then that following Monday, right? So Tarina, did you, or who went to the baking boot camp? I know I saw Tarina. Chef, I was there. I know I got your name, Sarah, right? And then, uh, <laughs> and I go, how was it? What'd you learn? Oh, we did this, this, and the other thing. And that's like, you know, 
Um, it, it just helps us, you know, the students. If they, if, if you can get a student to buy into anything, right? You know, they're going to be your biggest supporter on things like that. We have one here. Where's Jupan? Oh, he's at the end of the lollipop. Yeah. Okay, I had him for one of his classes, for a class, right? And he's always coming around the kitchen. I really think it's just because he's so little and he's always hungry. But he has gone to probably almost every baking boot camp for the last two years that we have. And so he's a wonderful promoter. Right? Yeah. Is he on our next slide? I think he is. Yeah, there's Jaquan. Uh, so we, we, we talked to some of our boot campers. They're kind of in their own little little cohort now. They are in a, a group together. They sign up for the same boot camps together. And Jaquan is great. You can see he's a light necktie. That means he's an upperclassman. And he's been recruiting a lot of freshmen to come to our baking boot camps. And um, he, if he had a punch card, it would be full. Like, he would have the prize. And he's been to a lot of them. And we sat down with Jaquan. Actually, Cece interviewed him because we knew we were coming here. And we knew that there would be teachers that teach a variety of subjects. And we said, Jaquan, if you were going to give any advice to another teacher for a boot camp, Maybe it was accounting, maybe it was a hospitality instructor. What advice would you give? And he said, have an interactive piece to it. And he really stressed, right? He really stressed that it shouldn't feel like going to class again. It should be a totally different experience for the student because why would they want to wake up and go to class again? Yeah, yeah. he basically said to me, he goes, I sit, we sit in class, like we're in class and in the academics, and then we're sitting in class here for six hours. I don't want to come and sit in class. It needs to be something interactive, yeah. something to get us moving. You have to be moving. And then Richard was another student that came to our last, uh, one of our last baking boot camps. It was a table side desserts class. And Richard had done culinary, and then he went and did our baking pastry program. And he did a little table side service in his uh, front of house classes, but he just wanted to practice again. He took it, he took the table side one, because he also works and uh, participates in a lot of our other programs that we have. And so he took that one, and he told me, he goes, I took that one because I wanted to refresh my skills. But what was so cool for me watching that one, because I did that one with our front of the house dining room instructor, is he was teaching the other students how to do it. You know, she had done the whole demo and everything like that, but then he was in t teaching a very scary freshman how to do it. And so it was like, yeah, what were they doing, like crepe Suzette or something? Right, yeah. Crepe Suzette, and it was delicious. And, and well, Richard said, you know, this is really, I think, one of the best pieces of advice we've gotten. Start small. It doesn't have to be everything all at once. You know, start small and then make it big. Start with just pasta. Start with just maybe some kind of chocolate piping thing, and then make it into something bigger. Question? Do you always have a formal thing, or for example, two ideas that came to mind was. You're going to be, here's the ingredients we have to work with, left over from all the other classes. Create something, or the opposite of that, have you ever done, use these leftover ingredients in that period of time, and say, let's have an informal cooking competition? No, but we will that would be, that would be a great idea. We've like, done that in classes. Like, yeah. We have, uh, like a chop. Yeah. So you'd have like a chop or a mystery it's basket fantastic. competition. This yeah. is what we have left over. Fantastic. Yeah. Go for it. Right. Yeah, I think that's an awesome idea. Definitely. Well, Cece's going to pass out a graphic or organizer that we made for all of you guys because we wanted to take all the work out of it. And again, you know, when you leave these conferences, you have great ideas, but what happens next? So if you start on the map on the first page, this is how you're going to figure out how to make a boot camp happen. We are so passionate about this. We really want this to work for you somehow. So fill out the boxes to make, you know, your boot camp happen at the end of the path. And then if you flip it over on the back side, we've got a checklist for you. So when you go to do your first boot camp, all you have to do is just follow that checklist. And gosh, we hope it's going to work for you. So you know, if you want to take a couple minutes, absolutely go ahead. Um, and then we're going to recap at about you know, three minutes till. And then we'll be at the end of it. But you know, we, just, we really wanted you to leave with something so that you could start this tomorrow if you wanted. And we want you to know that boot camps are fun. They're fun for us as teachers and they're fun for the students. You know, the students are engaged. When they're engaged, they stay. Retention, 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 right? It's all about retention. If they aren't there, we don't have jobs, right? I mean, it's as simple as that. We want them to stay. Uh, you know, it's collaboration for us with each other, with our students, them with each other. It's really, really important and really strong. And building that sense of community is so, so important for our students to feel engaged. Even for us, around the office, you know, we have our own little sense of community with our, our little boot camp crew, right, when we set up our boot camps. We're not bound by any curriculum of these, not bound by any syllabi, 
You know, it's just a good old time. Baking or cooking or front of house, whatever it is that you want to do at your boot camp, you can make that happen. I really feel strongly about that. And, and you the can lesson, work anything. Right, and the lesson that we wanted to end with, this is our mission statement. Exceptional education that inspires professional success, lifelong professional and intellectual growth. Well, the thing is, and I think everybody here knows, with young people, some of them think because of Food Network, God love them, they keep us employed, God love them, it makes it really challenging at times, is that you know, you don't do make a shoe one time and you're good at it, right? It's repeated skills. And you know, you're not a chef when you graduate in two years and you're not a chef when you graduate in four years, right? It's a lot of years, it's a lot of experience to get to the level that a lot of the people in this room are at right now. So I tell them this is another way to learn. You don't ever stop learning. I don't stop learning. I learn a lot from my students, um, a, a lot, right? All the time, how to do things better. They're always constantly teaching me. So for us, it fits in perfect with our mission statement. It's another way that they can learn, and it fits in with the mission statement and all the plans of the people who are much higher than we are here in this room. And so it's an added value service. You know, they talk about that a lot in other companies. I don't know if you've ever heard it, but for me, where I came from the corporate world, a lot of added value service, right? There is zero cost to the student. All they have to do is wake up. And because we're listening to feedback from our students, they've been saying, how about push back a little bit? Maybe not eight o'clock. Maybe you'll get more students. Jaquan, my favorite stalker there, he said, <laughs> why don't you try like nine or 10 o'clock? And so we are thinking seriously of going, you know, for, us as the chefs, really, what's an hour one way or the other at a certain point in time. And so listening to our students, what they want to have done, and also what's going to work for everybody. So uh, again, Ellen and I are here. If we can answer any questions, we want to be you know, aware of the time. We really appreciate you choosing us today.